So welcome guys, today we're going to discuss about how to prepare for the USMLE Step 2 CK. So the first thing you have to understand for USMLE Step 2 CK is that the NBME has changed the way USMLE Step 2 CK used to be. The first thing that's happening with USMLE Step 2 CK is it's getting tougher and tougher. Since Step 1 became pass and fail, they have to make an exam that is like this universal exam that kind of grades you in a way and because of that they're they're shifting their attention towards step 2 CK and making it tougher and tougher so that it, it's kind of a really good test so the way the, the way they have changed it is they have made it very like more tougher than it used to be in the previous years not only that they're increasing emphasis on patient care and they're, they're kind of putting a lot of questions on that and we're getting more of ethics again on step 2 CK how does one prepare for the step step to ck so the first thing you can do for step to ck is number one is having a good step one foundation so if you're prepared for the step one and you are prepared very well for it and you have gotten a really good score on it step to ck is just going to be easy for you because a lot of step two is based on step one so whenever you like go like write for step to ck a lot of it is based on step one about 60 to 70 percent of step two ck is step one is just the next best step that they ask you and that, that that's kind of the extra knowledge you need and they kind of ask you a plethora of other conditions like that are supposed to be sometimes normal and like there's uh there, there, there are conditions like transient erythroblastopenia and like these kind of conditions they want you to know like what happens in pregnancy there's a lot of normal stuff they're asking but the single best way to prepare for step two ck i think that's the most important is making sure that you prepare very well for step one. The reason I'm saying this is right now for step two CK, we really don't have any good learning resources. Like, I mean video resources in, in that way. For step one, we had great, amazing resources like BNB, Sketchy, and we had amazing books like First Aid and Pathoma, and like that kind of gave us like that kind of good learning. But for step two CK, that's not the point. Like First Aid doesn't work. Uh, as well neither does like neither is there any good series some people would argue ome we would discuss about that later but really not so that's the main thing prepare well for step one and trust me step two ck just becomes really easy for you then the second thing you need to do for step two ck is questions questions and questions the reason i'm saying this is because step 2 ck is a very variable exam meaning it's a, an exam based on algorithms and it's an exam based on like context of the question what's gonna happen is there's no no answer that's gonna be like gonna like always stand out to you meaning oh my god like you're never on always gonna be like okay this is the answer you're always going to be a bit unsure the reason i'm saying it is because all of the answers that you'll see there are kind of the the paths on a step but the thing is they'll ask you what is the best next step and you can't kind of take two steps at a time and jump from where you are to two steps ahead what you have to do is choose the next best step meaning let's say like a person a, a, a person has meningitis and they have increased intracranial pressure you can't straight jump to lumbar puncture there because if they have increased intracranial pressure we need to make sure that we do a ct so that like their brain does not herniate if they have increased intracranial pressure so we need to look up look up through ct so we cannot do lumbar puncture there if they have any contraindications for lumbar puncture so there's like focal neurological deficits there's a lot of that you cannot straight jump to lumbar puncture you have to do cd but another thing you have to know is what they can instead put there is antibiotics because since ct is going to take so much of time you must give antibiotics before doing ct but let's say if it's a kid if it's a kid who has uh, their anterior frontale open what's going to happen is we don't really need to do a ct scan even if they have increased intracranial pressure because the the open frontal kind of like handles that and because of that we can jump straight to lumbar puncture but again in kids we do lumbar puncture first and then we give antibiotics because lumbar puncture kind of gives us the culture like of what is inside and antibiotics kind of kill what's in the culture so that's why we do lumbar puncture first because it's super fast and then we can jump to antibiotics so you can see how things vary for different populations and that's how step 2 ck operates and when you do a lot of questions you kind of see that kind of variability with every single question meaning that the the single next best step changes 
with every question and like it has its own context and uh, when you prepare for step 2 CK you'll understand what I mean and you'll see countless examples of this over and over again so the best thing you can do for step 2 CK is do the the max number of questions you can so the first best resource for questions is you will you will so you will is like the single best resource it has everything you need and from people who have given the step to ck have told me that it's about like you will teaches you about 80 to 90 percent of the stuff that shows up on step to ck and so it's it's kind of like this comprehensive resources that cover covers everything for step to ck and that's great okay the second best q bank i think for step to ck is amboss and the thing about Amboss is Amboss carries a lot of concepts over from UWorld and kind of changes the questions, tweaks the questions, makes them a bit more confusing, a bit more hard and kind of presents it to you. So it's a really good way to revise UWorld I think and kind of test your testing, like test your testing skills and learn again like if, if you want to learn the same thing but in a different way Ambos is a very good resource and i would absolutely recommend it not only that the the other thing i love about Ambos is the library they have this amazing library for step 2 ck and it has everything you need in in case you need to uh, refer something no need like no you don't always need to open things like up to date and all what you can just do to go to just Ambos and search anything you want if you're confused and their library like literally has everything you need they have beautiful flowcharts beautiful diagrams and amboss is a total go and you absolutely should do amboss but understand like if you are if, if if you have less time okay and if you want to skip amboss the thing you can just do is you will and there's one more thing that's happening with you will is you will has been increasing the number of questions they have and like I remember that one year back like it used to be 3000 and now it's 3700 questions so when you like give your step to CK it'll probably be more so they are like because the whole USMA system is sh shifting towards step to CK they're they're focusing much more on step to CK and because of that they're increasing questions and like just know that that's happening right now so you might not be able to give that much of time to Amboss so kind of keep that in mind if if you want to just do one question bank choose you world and I'm Trust me, it's it's like the single most comprehensive resource. Should you do one pass or two passes of UWorld? That's a question that people ask. I think you should do, for, for me, it was just one pass of UWorld because I got like a, uh, so for me, it was just one pass of UWorld because I decided to go with Anki when, while doing a step to CK. And that's why, like, because what happens with Anki is it's a very good way to revise UWorld. So the thing with Anki is Anki is such a great resource like there, there are pre-made decks like there's this deck called the Tizanki deck and there's the Anking deck the the shorter one is Tizanki and it is a combination of u world and Amboss and what they have done is ta taken all the high yield flowcharts from and tables and kind of concepts from u world and kind of made it in a in a single deck and it's a very good way to like just browse through stuff like I love browsing through decks kind of like going through info again and kind of like that refreshes my memory a bit so that's very helpful if you want to do Anki it, it's absolutely helpful for revising you world like I love that about Anki and it's amazing for like reviewing all the algorithms because you have to make sure that you do not miss even one step in the algorithm because if you do that you can get it get the question wrong so be very careful with that you have to get it right and for that you have to know each and every single step in the algorithm so the next thing the next best thing i think for step uh to ck is uh this podcast by this guy called a uh, divine intervention podcast divine intervention podcast is like this like you can just type it out i'll just mention the link down there it's a really good uh, resource because this guy kind of knows a lot of what kind of the nvme asks and kind of he kind of uh, tells you all the high yield stuff and kind of revises it and so if you're in love with podcasts you can just put it on your phone and kind of do it like when you're working out or doing some chore i used to do it when i used to work out and so it was pretty helpful because he kind of takes you through all the high yield concepts and kind of introduces to a few things that even you will doesn't mention and like he, th this guy knows his stuff so definitely check uh, divine intervention podcast out after divine intervention podcast i'm just going to discuss about ome that is online med ed the thing about online med ed is Online med ed is a great learning resource. I'm not saying it's bad. All I'm saying is in online med ed, what happens is a lot of stuff is outdated. And the other thing is like, 
uh, a lot of stuff just like doesn't connect well with UWorld. And since UWorld is such a great resource, I don't see a need to do OME. But if you really just want a like video resource to go with Step 2 CK, you can do OME. In my opinion, you don't absolutely need to do it. Instead, like focus more on UWorld or maybe instead do some other questions from Amboss. And I, I think you should totally skip OME, but it's on you. So kind of try it out and see if it works out for you. For me, it absolutely did not work. So I'm not using that. So after that is CMS forms. CMS forms are such good tools to learn. So C CMS forms are like these things that are used for like shelf exams for uh, US medical students. And these things are kind of written by the NBME. These exams, uh, these small exams are written by NBME and these are just 50 questions. And the good thing about CMS forms is they kind of, kind of give you a glimpse into the NBME's head and like what kind of stuff they are asking on the exam right now and what's going on through their head. And it's a very good way to kind of calibrate to their question writing style and what kind of questions you'll be asked. Because I've seen uh, like I've seen people talking about how the newer forms, that is form five and six for all the, all the subjects like medicine and OBGYN and surgery and neurology and psychiatry, all of them show up like in their exams. So it's, it's pre like you should, Definitely try to do all the newer forms, that is form five and six, for all the subjects for the step two CK. And CMS forms are amazing. The practice tests for step two CK that are like, that, that are must to do is NBME, I think six, NBME seven, and NBME eight. All of these NBMEs are kind of a bit outdated and that's what I've heard, but it's definitely worth giving them because like people say that they are pretty accurate so kind of give that but understand that the current step to CK we are dealing with is a bit different from the NVMEs right now and that's probably the case. The The last thing is what what practice tests are the most rep representative of step 2 CK. I think those will be UWorld self-assessments 1 and 2 and that's what I've heard from everybody um, who has given the step 2 CK that UWSA 1 and US, uh, UWSA 2 kind of simulate USME step 2 CK in its toughness and the question stem length. So definitely do them, do not skip them. So remember the best practice tests are, uh, you have to do NBME 6, 7, 8 just to get a glimpse into the NBME's head. And also like just do UWSA because you, you will self assessments 1 and 2 kind of simulate step 2 CK very well. So that's how you prepare for the USME step 2 CK. So guys, if all this content was helpful to you, destroy the like button absolutely destroy the like button and subscribe thank you for watching guys